Hey, what's up, guys? It's Tibbs. And according to Blizzard, private servers are wrong. What am I talking about here? Well, a couple of days ago, a German publication called ComputerBuild.de released the transcripts of an interview they had conducted with some classic WoW developers. And while the majority of that interview was basically what we already knew at BlizzCon, um, there were a couple of parts that really, really stood out at me, namely an answer that came from Omar Gonzalez, who's one of the software engineers on the classic WoW dev team. Really cool guy, and as you guys probably already know, Omar was one of the individuals who gave part of the presentation at the Classic WoW panel at BlizzCon. So, um, really, really cool guy, and the answer that he gave during this interview was very, very interesting. And just so I don't misquote him here, I'm going to read the question that he was asked and his answer. But bear in mind, guys, this website is a German website. And as a result, the information that you're seeing in front of you, the transcript that you're seeing in front of you has actually been translated by Google Chrome. So take it with a pinch of salt. Um, some translations are obviously not perfect. And uh, as a result, some of this might be a little bit off, but I'm gonna do my best to decipher the information I see in front of me and where the English kind of gets jumbled up. Um, I'm gonna try to paraphrase what I think the translation is trying to say. So. Here is the question that Omar was asked during this interview, and this is his response. What are the biggest challenges for you in restoring the WoW version 112? Question, obviously. Here is the answer that Omar gave. I came across a very early code that I wrote when I started as a software engineer. He started at Blizzard back in 2003, by the way. He actually worked on Vanilla WoW originally. As I am now much more experienced in my job, it was a great challenge for me to ignore my instinct, clean up my old work where it was not absolutely necessary. Many of our players have not only loving, but also very specific memories of how certain game mechanics work. A big part of our job is to reconcile the memories with the workings. It has been found that in many cases, our memory was faulty or incomplete. Therefore, it is important for us to have an original build of 112 internally, which we can use as a reference. Now, what is Omar talking about here when it comes to memory? Well, a lot of us that have played vanilla, you, me, a lot of you guys out there, um, we all have very distinct memories of how certain things worked back in the day. And obviously, because Vanilla WoW is such a big game, and because there's been almost 15 years elapsed since vanilla, some of those memories are going to be off. Human memory in general is very unreliable. That's why eyewitnesses and testimonies are oftentimes taken with a grain of salt and usually you need a lot more evidence to substantiate a claim in court because memory itself can be manipulated, can be changed. And a lot of things that you might believe that you remember so vividly can be off. And of course, this extends to WoW Classic when players report certain aspects of the game or at least claim the game operated in a certain way, but the reality is their memory was wrong and it didn't. And uh, Omar gives us a great example of something like this that happened recently during the Classic WoW demo. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue with his answer. A concrete example of this was what happens when a sorcerer, I think they meant warlock, summons a demon while he has already summoned one. In the BlizzCon demo of WoW Classic, the demon did not appear at the end as the spell began to work. In Battle for Azeroth, the pet is despawned at the end of the spell. Many players reported this as a mistake, or at least saw it as a contradiction to the original functioning of the summon, so we checked the problem based on our player feedback. I believe what he's trying to say here is that in Vanilla WoW, back in the day, a lot of players reported during the demo that pets were despawning at the start of a new summoned pet. Meaning that if you're a warlock, let's say you have your imp out, you start summoning your void walker, the imp disappears right away at the start of the summon. That is what the behavior was during the classic WoW demo. Now, a lot of people who have very specific memories of vanilla or have played on vanilla private servers believe that the pet should stay out until the end of the new pet's summon cast, meaning that that imp would not disappear until you have fully summoned your void walker. And this was reported as a bug on the demo. A lot of people believed that is the case. The imp should stay out until the void walker summon has completed. But according to Omar and the 112 reference code, the original vanilla 112 reference code, this appeared to be wrong. 
Many players reported this as a mistake or at least saw it as a contradiction to the original functioning of the summon, so we checked the problem based on player feedback. While many bug reports entered by players are correct, it turned out that this is not the case here. After a thorough review of our 112 reference code, we found that we had correctly replicated the classic behavior and that the demon pet actually disappears at the beginning of the spell. Very, very interesting. Essentially, the experience that a lot of private server players have and the faulty memories that a lot of players have about the summoning mechanism in vanilla is wrong. And the reason why I made this video is because I can totally foresee us having this conversation time and time again between now and Classic WoW's launch. I am certain, very, very certain, and you'll hear this from private server developers themselves, that there are a lot of mistakes made on private servers. There are a lot of mechanics, proc rates, resistance values, armor values, entire raid abilities that have been fabricated because those items were missing from the cores that these servers use. And as a result, the developers actually had to fill in the blanks pretty much based on their best knowledge. And as a result, the modern patch 112 client, the Nostalrius core that a lot of players have experienced over the years, is not necessarily an accurate representation of what vanilla WoW was. And that's a pretty big deal because unfortunately, nobody really knows what was Blizz like except Blizzard, because they're the only ones who actually have the patch 112 database and the patch 112 source code. Um, the rest of us have not experienced that since actual patch 112 back in the day. And I wanna actually give you guys another example of something like this happening. And this is actually a story that was relayed to me by Nano from the Nostalrius team. If you guys don't know who Nano is, he was the head of the QA department at the Nostalrius team, and he was one of the five NOST members that was invited to go out to Blizzard Entertainment back in 2016 and advocate for Classic Realms. Nano is a super cool guy, by the way. I did an interview with him not too long ago. I'll link it in the description below. Honestly, you need to watch that interview. The guy just, he reveals a lot about private servers, about the visit at Blizzard, everything. Really, really good guy and um, just all around great character. But uh, one of the stories that Nano told me was when he went to Blizzard, Ian Hazakostas approached him and he asked him, how did you guys code the deep breath on the Anixia encounter? And Nano explained to him how the NOS guys had programmed the breath to work. And I think Ian like shrugged it off or laughed a little bit like, oh my God, that's not how it works at all. And Ian went on to tell Nano that... Uh, that when Ian was first hired by Blizzard, one of the first things he went to look for was how that deep breath functioned because he had no idea at the time. And as you guys know, Ian was one of the big theory crafters back in the vanilla days with Letus Jerks and whatnot. So he didn't know how deep breath worked. He went and checked how it worked at Blizzard. And, um, and basically what he told Nano was, you guys got it completely wrong. So we have an example here of boss mechanics on private servers not functioning properly or not functioning as they did back in patch 112 in original vanilla. Even more than that, we have a lot of other examples of private servers filling in the blanks when it comes to information that the servers simply don't have. And that is things like proc rates, which I mentioned. Uh, a big example of this is the iron foe proc rate. I believe on Nostalrius, I can't remember, I think it was on Nostalrius, the proc rate was set at 10% because there was a post on some German or European forum back in the day that suggested the proc rate was 10%. But uh, later on, it was discovered that the proc rate was actually closer to 2.5% and it was changed. So proc rates on these private servers are completely made up. Or I shouldn't say that because that's actually discrediting a lot of hard work that the QA guys do. Um, they're, they're fabricated based on the knowledge that's available to some of these QA representatives. And um, obviously a guy like Nano, even if you had five Nanos, 10 Nanos, scouring the forums day and night to find out which proc rates or which weapons proc'd at which rates, you're not going to find that information if it simply doesn't exist. If there is no forum post that told us what the proc rate on Ironfo was, we're SOL, right? So unfortunately, that has been happening over the past couple of years. That is the case on a lot of these private servers. And as a result, the version of vanilla that we experience today is not necessarily how it was back in 2006. And uh, 
And yeah, another great example is armor values of mobs and bosses, resistance values, you know, magical school resistances. This is another huge one that a lot of people think is wrong on private servers, but we don't have the information that tells us what is right. And I have a feeling that once the classic WoW Alpha and Beta comes out, we are going to see a lot of discrepancies between private servers and actual patch 1.12.1. And I think a lot of people are going to get upset. <laughs> I think a lot of people are going to get upset. Um, I mean, me personally, I am somebody that uh, when I level, I grind a lot. And there are certain grind spots that I take full advantage of because based on private server data, the mobs in those areas have very, very low armor. And as somebody who traditionally plays a warrior, I take advantage of those low armor mobs because I can hit them a lot harder than a high armored mob. It's going to be very, very unfortunate uh, to find out that some of these mobs had a lot more armor back in vanilla and it's really going to screw with my leveling process and my leveling route and I'm probably going to get a little upset but uh, hey, no changes, right? No changes. So um, I'm just, I'm really excited. I'm really excited to see what all these differences are going to be and I think this is great for both classic WoW newbies and Classic WoW veterans. A lot of Classic WoW veterans, or Vanilla WoW veterans, as I should say, have played Vanilla for a very, very long time, and have gotten very accustomed to the current meta on private servers. To tell those guys that, hey, there could potentially be an entirely new meta because bosses might have different damage, uh, armor, and resistance values. Proc rates could be different. You know, boss abilities could be completely different. That is very refreshing. And I think a lot of veterans are very much going to appreciate that, especially theory crafting veterans, because they get to go back to the drawing board and recalculate everything to find out what the actual meta is. And on top of that, classic WoW newbies, vanilla WoW newbies that haven't played vanilla before or haven't played vanilla since the early days of original vanilla, um, they're not as far behind because, again, that meta might change. And as a result, it might help even the playing field a little bit with classic WoW veterans and classic WoW newbies. Uh, so... It's very interesting. It's very, very interesting. And I want to ask you guys this question. Based on your experience on private servers or based on your original vanilla memories, what is something that you think is going to be different on Classic WoW than on private servers because private servers have it wrong? I hope I phrased that question like understandably. I'd love to hear your answers in the comments section below. I'm really curious as to what you guys think is going to be different on Classic WoW versus private servers. Um, there's one thing that I think is very different based on my memory back in the day. I am pretty sure that rested experience on private servers accrues at a much faster rate than it did in vanilla, at least during early vanilla, because... Uh, yeah, if you log off for like two days on private servers, you've got a full level of rest experience or something. Not a full level, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, something crazy like that. So that is one thing that I think is going to be very, very different on Classic WoW. But uh, again, I'd love to hear what you guys think. What do you think is going to be different on Classic WoW versus private servers? But yeah... Um, really interesting article, guys. I will link it in the description below for you. Again, most of it is stuff we already knew, stuff that was already revealed to us at BlizzCon. But it's nice to see the Classic WoW devs giving interviews out right now, uh, because honestly, we are in a very dry spell when it comes to Classic WoW news. So... Really cool article. Hope you guys check it out. And if you guys want to discuss this article or some of the topics that we discussed in this video, feel free to join my Discord channel, which has been linked in the description below. I want to be talking about this stuff like all day today and tomorrow. So if you guys have any questions or any comments about differences between private servers and classic, wow, let's talk about it, man. And, um, if you guys are interested in keeping up with classic, wow, content news and updates, you can follow me on my Twitter as well. And of course, I stream live on Twitch. Dude, this is so annoying. This is so annoying. <laughs> I hate doing these plugs at the end of videos, dude. It's so, oh, uh, it's it's so, uh. Anyways, um, if you guys want to follow me on Twitch, I'll leave that in the description below as well. Uh, but aside from that, fellas, have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys on Twitch. And as always, tips out, baby.